Many times when you're working with images, you have images that are surrounded by some color, and you can use that to your advantage, and you can select based on color, and you can actually select what you want based on color, or you can select what you don't want based on color and then inverse it. And there's the magic wand, there's also the color range command. So we're going to explore those next. Well, I have this product here, this car, and a lot of times you'll have products that are in a background that's white or transparent or maybe some other color or maybe it's sky. And you can use that to your advantage to select it by selecting the opposite. So I'm going to start by getting my magic wand. The magic wand is with the quick selection, so you may need to access that magic wand. You can either just hold and click, or you can use your Shift W. Here's my Shift W to switch back and forth between them. And I'm going to make sure that all my settings for the magic wand are reset, and I can see all that information, including the default tolerance of 2. And so, excuse me, of 32. There we go. So if I start clicking on the white, it automatically is selecting that white area for me. And I can simply go to Select, Inverse, and it will inverse the selection for me, and now I have the car rather than the background. Let's go back here to Select, Inverse, and we get back to that white background. Now, if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, maybe remove that shadow, I can use my Shift command and start clicking in and remove some of the shadow. Looks pretty good. Oh, except when I clicked right there, let me go ahead and undo that. I can use a control Z or I could even go into my history and undo a step there. But when I undo, I'm realizing that this is just too close to that wheel color. And that's where I can change my tolerance. Now, the higher the tolerance, the more colors you're going to get. And the lower the tolerance, the fewer colors. You can think of it like a, a circle, like a radius. And it just means the more colors that are adjacent, the more you're going to get. So I'm going to scroll this down. Let's go pretty low. I'm using my scrubby slider here, just click and dragging. You could also just type a number in. Maybe that's a little too low. How about around five or six? And I'm going to just hold down my shift and select. And I got to get kind of get in there and get the details. But because this color is different enough from the black, the wheel isn't getting selected. So that's helping me out. I could also come in and get that little edge. Oops, I forgot to hold down my, my shift. No worries, though. This happens a lot where we're trying to make a selection and add to it. We can just use our undo command or go back in history. And I'll, now I can go back and use my shift command. And I could kind of go in there and start getting the details that I wanted, deciding whether I want that part that's in the windshield or not. But ultimately, just inverse or can shift control I and I can inverse that selection, and now I actually have the car area, and I could do something with that. For example, I could use a, let's do a, let's do a vibrance on that, and just knock down the vibrance a little bit, or maybe even pull it up a little bit, really intensify it. There we go. And you can see that, that change. Ooh, that's an, a very intense car. Now, you can use the magic wand on items like this. Now, if I try to click, I'm realizing my tolerance is still 6, right? It's remembering that tolerance. So let's go ahead and deselect, and I'm just going to reset the tool back to 32. And now I can get the sky, and I could keep going and get in. Um, but sometimes when you're selecting, it's really important to decide, do I want to use a selection based on the color changes or maybe something's more based on contrast or the edges using lassos to do something that's maybe uh, more freeform or freehand or something geometric. So you have to think of your particular image to figure out what tool is going to work best when you're selecting it. Now I'm going to go over here to Paris and this one I'm noticing there's a lot of sky and I want to change that sky, really intensify it. And the magic wand is going to be a great tool for selecting the sky. I might still need to use my shift command. Now, one of the things I could do is I could actually bump the tolerance up. Let's try 100 here. I could bump it up and actually get a lot of that sky. I might possibly getting, be getting more of than the sky, though, um, because, there's, because 100 is so high. And so trying to figure out that number can be a little tricky. 
It's also, when you use the magic wand, it's only colors that are consecutive, that are touching. So notice how it's not getting in that area, and I have to keep clicking in order to get that. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this tool and deselect. And another tool that we can use that works great, especially when you're trying to get into these nooks and crannies, is in the Select menu. It's called the Color Range. And the Color Range command lets you select based on whatever sampled colors you want. I'm going to use my eyedropper here and just click on the sky. And as I click on different areas of the sky, you can see how it's selecting. Well, I can use my Shift command to add to that selection. I'll just keep going until I get everything. And you're noticing here in the sample area how it's really getting into those nooks and crannies, but it's still maintaining, looks like it's still maintaining the, the other colors pretty well. Um, another thing about the color range is you could use, instead of sample colors, you could choose something like, I want to select all the reds or all the cyans or blues. So you have some other options of selecting if you want to do some color corrections or color adjustments. It's another option or some of the darker colors. Here's a nice one too, just selecting skin tones for doing some, some updates or changes to it later. We're going to go ahead and choose OK. And so now I've got all this information selected, and I'm going to go ahead and actually apply a curve. That'll really just make things pop out a little bit, add some drama to that sky. But what's interesting is it's only affecting what's selected. Notice that it's not changing, as I make it really dramatic, it's not changing the Eiffel Tower area, it's just changing the sky part. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can actually um, make some changes to the background, uh, make some changes to the Eiffel Tower using kind of a similar effect and select it. Let's go back here to select. A lot of times, if you've done a recent selection and you haven't done too many steps, you can actually go back and reselect your last selection, right? Reselect the last selection, and then you can use that to your advantage. Now, this is all the sky, so I'm going to go ahead and inverse it. So now I have everything except for the sky, and you know, there's a little bit of blue there, but that'll work fine. And let's add a vibrance to this. And if I knock it down a little bit, it can make an interesting effect, kind of a black and white. And there we go. And I could always turn these on and off to see the, the results. But it, does, it definitely gives me some options. But it's all because I was able to select that sky based on the tools for colors. Now we're going to do a pop quiz. In addition to the magic wand, what is another way to make color-based selections? A magnetic lasso tool, B, quick selection tool, C, color range command, D, color replacement tool. The answer is C, color range command. So with all these great tools, you're going to be able to select your images based on color or select the opposite of what you want based on color and then inverse it.